Okay, what I'm going to do is I have this Harbor Freight um, drill. I picked it up on sale. I think I got it for like under 20 bucks, maybe like 18 bucks. And it's lasted like maybe a year and a half. But since then, the battery is completely shot. It won't hold the charge. If you charge it and leave it unplugged for more than a day, the battery's flat. So I let it charge for about 10 hours. And that's all it's got. So after a good 10 hour charge, that won't even put one screw in. So, um, I need to find a better way to make a battery. Because a new battery will only last a year. Why spend 20 bucks on the battery for it to only last a year? So, one thing I've been doing is, um, I have a whole bunch of laptop batteries, different shapes, different sizes, but one thing that they have in common, they have a little warranty sticker, which I've broken and I've opened up, and <gasps> they're empty because all the cells are right here and I have a whole bunch of them right here, bunches of them. I have lots of laptop batteries, so I test them, I make sure they work because these use nickel metal hydride, which is absolutely like, it's okay because they're cheap and they can provide a lot of current when you need it compared to like alkaline or other chemical makeup except for lithium. Lithium can put out a tremendous amount of amperage um, even when they're 10 years old. Like some of these batteries here are 10 plus years old or the, the red ones down there right here, these ones, those are Sanyo I think. The green ones here are um, Samsung. And some of these right here are Samsung. And um, this one here is 2003. These are out of a Toshiba. And these are uh, 2001. And these and I have uh, balance chargers on them because I use my um, balance charger to charge them. And all these go together into a big, huge battery bank that I use to power my laptop, which will have like a four day battery life. So why not do the same thing with this? If I only need 18 volts, I only need five sets of batteries. Now I can put five batteries like this in series to make my 18 volts, because these are 3.7 volts each. Uh, or I can make 3.7 volts with twice the capacity by using two batteries that are wired in parallel, and then put them in series. So if I have five of these, that's ten batteries, that'll give me pretty much all day of putting screws in if I wanted to. If I, but they're much bigger. So I'm going to see if I can lay them down inside or just put them in this way and cover everything with electrical tape because of course the battery won't close. And then the other thing I um, was thinking of doing was I got this step-up converter here with a magical connector on it. So what I was thinking was, if I have a little switch on the side of the battery for battery powered or AC power, and I have this in there on the switch, and then I use a um, big fat power brick like this one here. This is a 18.5 volt, 6.5 amp, which is probably sufficient to run the drill. So if I wanted to, I can make this battery operated or AC powered. So just a pondering thought, and I'm gonna spend my day today and um, either waste a day or do something that um, I don't think people have done before. Correct me if I'm wrong. Or if... Um, oh, shoot. I can't use these. These are Sony. Oh, no. I don't want my drill catching fire. I'm not going to use these ones then. Nope. Those ones are going back in my good box. I'll use probably the Samsungs or something. I don't want my drill catching fire. If you've ever had a MacBook that caught fire or a Dell that caught fire, they had Sony batteries in them. So, just a heads up. 
So correct me if I'm wrong. If I convert this to lithium, and it's NiCAD. I thought it was an little nickel hydrate. No, it's NiCAD. Oh my gosh. That's why. Oh no. So I'm gonna make this uh, lithium, and then it'll be more gooder. So um, I'm gonna crop all these videos together. I don't know if that's called cropping, but I'm gonna merge them together. So I have one big video for you guys to watch. So prepare to get bored. So here's the battery pack. I took it apart. And there were these fancy little cardboard covers covering the battery so they don't short out on the PCB board there. And um, one thing I noticed is that, yeah, they're nicely tab welded together. You know, they did a good job. I'd taken apart a Sony battery one time where the tabs were not even welded to the battery. So I was wondering why the the laptop I was using only had a 45 minute battery life. I took the battery apart and I found out half the tabs weren't welded on right. So at least these are uh, welded on sufficiently. And um, let me see if I can find a good one here to read. Yeah, right there. They're Lang Yi NICAD 1.2 volts, 1300 milliamp hour. Now that's important. It tells you how the capacity of the battery. The milliamp hour is like the capacity. The 1.2 volts is the force. So these batteries right here, I know they're Sony. And um, focus. These are 3.7 volt, and I've measured them on my, my balance charger. They're almost 2200 milliamp hour. Almost 2200. And um, they're like. Um, 2180 or 2160 and something like that. So if these are 1.2 volt, the other ones are 3.5, and these are 1300, but mine are 2100. So we're looking at like almost four times the capacity per cell, and they're not that much taller. And the funny thing is, the nightcads are thicker. These are a little bit taller, but lithium has about I want to say about four times the capacity because these batteries were probably a higher capacity before but they're really old now so I'm not really sure on what the capacity is uh, these ones here are Samsung and they have a lot more capacity so I'm probably going to use these or some of them so, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I have fifteen cells. That's three sets of five. So if I make a cell five volts in or five cells in series, then make eighteen volt. These are three. These are three point seven volt. So, but I need to have three in parallel to make the cell full. An idea. So, and I I think I remember seeing this on an episode of Home Improvement. It's Tim Taylor, I think it was, who supercharged his drill and um, like burned down the house or something. So, let's see if I get lucky. So here's the 15 cells in the battery pack. Of course, they're not wired up yet. I just wanted to put them in there for a rough fit. So you can see they're, they're sticking up about an inch and a half here, based on my knuckle. It's about an inch, inch and a half. So when I put the top on, of course I can't. It won't fit, and the screws that are way over here they won't reach. I need to use longer screws. So I probably will recycle the screws and use duct tape or electrical tape to cut, keep the cover on. So I know this is not OSHA approved or you know, UL approved or whatever, but um, I just wanted to see. The one thing I did notice here, let me take these out. I only needed five in series. The hair stuck to the glue. If I fit three cells and then get two more, I think I had these like there, like that. So I have five cells in there. So if I put five cells like that, it'll actually close. 
and I can reuse the cover just by using five cells. Now these cells, remember, are 2200 milliamp, or close to that. These ones here are 1300. So, just by doing that, I would get almost twice the battery life from when it was brand new. So, hmm, pondering. Hmm, what to do? I'm going to see if I can fit 10 in here. By playing around, I have them stacked up by two, and I got three in there flush. Now, I have space in here, but two in front and two in the rear here, but it doesn't quite fit because they have these silly little, I don't know, I need better light here. Let me turn my light around here. Uh, there we go. Those little things are there to hold the screw, but they're slightly in the way. So what I'm going to do is see if I can shave them down with a knife or a file or something so I can put two batteries here and two batteries here. Then I'll have ten batteries, so that's two in parallel, five in series. And I can still use one of my balance charger leads because these work up to six cell. There we go, up to six cell. I'm only going to use five. So if I use five cells, I can still use my balance charger to charge them. And I can... Um, um, have a turbocharged battery pack, lithium battery pack for my uh, silliness $18 Harbor Freight drill. So, just fun. That one of my project is done. What I've done is as a test, testing is always step one, or after disassembly, is I've attached my 19 volt connector to the battery leads where the batteries work. So I've unsoldered those and I sent those where did I put the batteries right here. Right here is the batteries. I unsoldered them. So this is out of a Toshiba laptop. And that goes there. And here is the 19 volt lead. I try to do this with one hand because I only got get oh let me put the phone down. that connected. I don't want to put any weight on the solder. It goes to that brick down there. Uh, it's a thick cord so it's pretty heavy. And I break the solder. I've had a lot of problems with the solder. He is really crap. Really garbagey solder. So as a test. Hmm. I'm wondering if this power brick is bad. Huh. Or I'm overloading it. Let me see how if I pull a little bit. So apparently this draws more than six point something in other amps. That's overloading that power supply. Hmm. Plan B. Hmm. This takes more than six amps. Maybe I think the power supply is bad. Eighteen point five volts, sixteen point five amps. I'm gonna bench this later. I have a feeling this might be bad. Hodge. <sighs> okay, I have a dilemma here. I got these batteries, I don't know how to pronounce that, Sony, whatever, another, can't pronounce that, but I got the batteries to fit with a little bit of persuasion, I got some sandpaper here, and I got my knife, and I have my LED light above me, so it's a little bit better for the camera here, focus, there we go, is that these two things, I got my knife and I shaved them down a little bit so I can get the battery to fit in there nice and snug, and I welded on leads right here, so I can, um, well not weld, I soldered it, um, leads on here so I can connect the batteries in um, series here. So I'm going to have, now the, the little ridge, that little bump right there marks positive. So flip it around, that's negative. So I'm going to have one negative here, and then positive, and then negative here. And then the fifth 
set is going to be positive here. So, I run that way around. so what's going to happen is they don't quite fit because the little posts are in the way and or the corner's too rounded because these are kind of like a squarish corner even though they're round they uh, don't quite fit in there so but this would make five in series two in parallel which would give me about four times the runtime even though I'm using Sony I don't care about these batteries I won't use them in any of my projects so I think I've used this Harbor Freight drill maybe ten times in the last year two years maybe so if I don't run it too hard these batteries should last a while so um, so what my plan here is to get these to fit so I'm going to use some sandpaper here to sand down the posts a little bit and the corner and um, when I'm done I'll uh, continue the video in my um, room I spent about 10 minutes with a, with a sandpaper and a flat tip screwdriver and I got nowhere I don't have a rasp, I don't have a file, I don't have anything that would make this job work um, the right way. I, I do have tools to make to do it the wrong way. A soldering iron. <laughs> if all else fails, use fire, right? So I'm going to melt the plastic to get the batteries to fit. So, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, waiting for the thing to warm up a little bit. Doesn't have to warm up all the way. I just need to warm up enough to melt the plastic. And then I is done with this part and I'll start assembling the battery pack. I got my new battery pack completed uh, um, to this stage. This is the positive, even though it's black, because it's on the positive battery, po positive the battery. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And this red one, of course, is negative. <laughs> so, um, Criticize me on that, please. Um, I just used whatever wires I had from the spare laptop batteries. I got a green one here. And I, what I'm going to eventually do is put this female connector, or technically it's a male, somewhere on the battery, probably like over here, so that my balance leads right here. I have some place to exit. But right now I'm probably going to do the old-fashioned way and just drill a hole and just have the, the bundle of wires going through the hole right for just right now. That way I can charge it with my old um, balance charger. But yeah, I'm using two Samsung and then eight um, Sony's. Um, I don't know who Shima is, but not me. Um, anyways, um, I'm gonna. Um, I tested it with my multimeter. Here, let me do the old school way here and just. Uh, which I had a hand, a uh, third hand. So this goes on the negative, and this one goes on the positive. 19.25, this is close enough. So somehow I'm doing that with one hand. So I know it needs to be charged, because it should be higher than that, but still, hey, it's together. I just need to put the top on it, cut a hole for the balance leads to come out, and then, um, so I can charge it. And the way how the charger works, that silly, this thing right here. So I have to use an alligator clips to clip onto the positive and negative on here, and then use the balance leads that come out on the side of the battery for the balance leads. So, um, so that's it for right now. So let's um, charge it. I'm gonna put the cut cap on, solder everything back up, cut the hole probably over there for the balance leads, um, and then. We'll get a, get a charge on it and see what happens.